You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Victoria Schaefer, aspiring actress, babysitter extraordinaire, college student and animal enthusiast, is on her own for the first time in New York City. Follow Victoria and her two dogs, Rue and Echo, as she cares for her furry friends and juggles home life and career, all the while managing to survive in the world's most hectic city. The exciting animal adventures and secret stories from both ends of the leash that make up the Tales of the City. Hey guys, it's Victoria Schaefer, your host of Tales of the City on Pet Life Radio. I'm here with Tom Leopold, a dear family friend and New York City-based comedy writer, performer, and novelist. Hi, Tom. Thanks so much for being here with me today. Well, thanks for having me, Victoria. I'm thrilled <laughs> to be on your show. Me too. So for as long as I can remember, your family has been huge dog lovers. Oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> what it's do you ridiculous. think? It's makes ridiculous. It? We had three. And you know Henry, my old boy, my Boston Terrier. We just, yes. we just uh, went to heaven uh, about two weeks ago. And he was in pretty bad shape. But I know he's uh, up there passing gas like he was doing here. <laughs> up in heaven, and we still have our two Pomeranians, Skipper D and uh, Eloise. So, you know, we're we're not dogless. Definitely not. Never. What do you think makes a dog lover? I think it's a compassionate person, a person who understands that the dog, I think dogs are like little angels. I think they're like D-list angels, you know, and (laughs) they, they provide a great service. And if you're you know, I'm not sure about cat people. I, I don't think that cats provide the same kind of, not just affection, but almost like they add an extra sensory protective device to the family. I mean, they bark, they protect kids. They And anyone who's had dogs knows that every one of them is different as every kid is different, you know. And um, I just think, you know, it was meant to be that dogs became part of families, you know. It's uh, And I think it's a very natural thing. Right. I think it was always meant to be, and it's... Uh, it's a joy. It's hard work sometimes, especially like you and I, we live in the city and, you know. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm in the same boat. Yeah, the freezing cold. Especially with this guy. weather. Oh, I know. But these two little ones, they're both about four and a half, five pounds, so they can go on the pads, you know. But uh, they're members of the family and you love them. Did you grow up with dogs? Yeah. We had a schnauzer, Perkins, all growing. <laughs> he was great. I loved him very much. And do you think it's important for kids to grow up oh, with yeah. dogs? Oh, I think so. They're friends. They're like friends to kids and protectors. It's an interesting thing, not to make it a downer, but when we had Henry, 16, you know that. He was like around when you were a baby, put him to sleep and all that. But, you know, as sad as it was, and we're all crying, it teaches kids about death, too. I mean, I think it's a good experience to see that for a young person. You know, they're like markers that lead the way in, in many ways. I haven't experienced that yet. Our childhood dogs are getting up there as well. Yeah. Well, I don't recommend it, but it's inevitable. (laughs) Right. Can you recall some of your best memories with Henry? Well, I have a really funny story that you won't, you know, I might have, I probably told you this, you know, or or told your dad, but I was working, uh, I had to go down to work on a sitcom and I felt bad for Henry because he's just home all day. I know Barbara, my wife, was home, but he needed to kind of uh, commune with fellow dogs. So I, I won't say the name of the place, but I took him to one of those pet spas or we can play with other dogs, right? He had erection so big, it looked like a Macy's Day parade balloon. <laughs> I'm telling you. And, and all the dogs are neutered there, so they don't know how it happened. So we get him home. It's cold, and he can't even sit down, you know. <laughs> It's, he's in so much pain from this erection, right? And uh, I don't know if this is the right kind of story for you guys, but it's a story we laugh at and love. And we're feeling so sorry for him, but it's also so funny. So I, tr- I get the vet on the phone, and the vet says, I said, what do we do? He's, you know, it w- and the vet says, oh, it won't go back in its sheath? I go, no, it won't <laughs> go back. I didn't even know there was such a word as a sheath to go back into, you know, that red uh, item that yeah. they have, the, the gentleman. The dog gentleman. So she says, fill the sink up with wa- warm water and pour an entire pound of sugar in the water. I kid you not. <laughs> Did you have sugar? Well, we had, sugar? we had a big bag of sugar, you know. Barbara likes to bake. So, oh, yeah. So we put fill the sink up, kitchen sink up with water. We pour a pound of sugar in it. And she says, that'll make it reduce and go back in its sheath. sheath you know? And we fill it up. We put a pound of sugar in. And Henry's uh, entertainment center, let's say. 
it doesn't reach down into the water. He's too tall and he can't bend down. So that's, that doesn't happen. So I said, <laughs> I said, honey, I said, do you have any like uh, penis Tupperware? I could just hold a little thing on his, you know, a little bucket of little bottle of Tupper of uh, <laughs> water, which I do for like an hour. And then I don't get too gross, but I had to use Vaseline to get, and it took forever. And the girls, and I said, I got to get this together before the girls come home from school. You know, they were like, you know, just kids. And there was another example of how dogs teach kids, you know, <laughs> why this happened, what's going on, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and these are so very I, unconventional um, lessons they're learning. Well, just about, you know, they learn about everything. Uh, and uh, not that this was sex, but it was this you know, <laughs> a little crazy. And there's, and as weird as it was and as kind of wild as it was, it was, it was a wonderful thing. And then I had to get the money back from this uh, doggy spa. And I had to explain to the American Express person what happened. I said, cancel it. I just joined for $300. You got to cancel it. My dog got an erection and I threw him out. So that was a <laughs> conversation to have. So that, that is definitely a funny story to tell. That was a really funny story. And uh, for us, it was, it's one of our chestnuts, you know. But uh, let me see. What You want just funny stories or? Any other stories. Well, I'll tell you something that made me just fall desperately in love with my boy, Henry, right at the beginning. You know, our, uh, Olivia, who's in perfect health, yeah. now, she had kind of a, a tick, you know, a childhood tick where she, her head would shake. You know, and a lot of kids get these and it goes away. But mm -hmm. she was, you know, we were upset by it. So one day I'm walking. We didn't have any dogs. And I'm walking on the street and I see a Boston Terrier. And I go, I'm getting her. I thought was the greatest looking dog. I'm getting got Olivia a Boston Terrier. And I got, you know, I didn't know you're not supposed to go to a pet store. But I got a, went to the pet store and I got Henry, a little puppy, you know. Mm -hmm. And I put him in a box, and both Olivia and Gussie were home. And they were just like, I don't you know, Olivia may have been 10, and Gussie was like 7. And I put him in a, in a, in a Federal Express box. And I said, you guys, can you open this for me? You know, I, I'm busy. Just open it for me. I think it's a script or something. And they opened it. Little Henry was in the box. And the interesting thing, and they were thrilled, of course. And the interesting thing was, from the first night, and we let it walk around, we let Henry walk around, he stayed with Olivia. She was the reason oh, we wow. got And I kid you not. And uh, that was the first, well, I loved him from the seeing his gorgeous mug, you know. And that's another thing. These animals, these dogs, they, they have a wonderful, you know, they say six cents or seven cents. I don't know. And what can you buy for seven cents? No, I kid. <laughs> but um, so that's another thing. And one time I took him to the car wash and we stayed in the car because Henry loved water. Like if we were walking down the street and someone had a hose, he would bite the, the hose water. He would bite it and bite it and just loved it. So I took him to the car wash and I thought this would be interesting. And Henry and I were in the car as it went through the car wash and all this water surrounded the car. He went absolutely crazy. Just, I don't know if he was happy with it. He was just, you know, it was the thing he loved, water. So that was uh, maybe not the most hysterical story, but I remember it fondly. My dog Echo loves water too, like obsessively loves it. It's oh, like some yeah. dogs hate it, some dogs love it. Oh, yeah. And we would swim in the pool. You know, he'd run right by us. I mean, he'd run with me if I was doing laps. He'd run on the side of the pool up and back. And he loved to go in, too. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. We, uh, you know, remember our house in Greenport on the tip of Long Island. Every morning I would take Henry to this little little beach right in the village of Greenport. And we had a nickname for Henry. We had like a thousand. You know how you have a thousand nicknames for your dogs? Or we do. Anyway, maybe we're crazy, crazier than we think. But we called him Benny, too. Henry, Benny, Ben. I don't know why. And <laughs> Henny. Henny, the boy, you know. <laughs> we gave him a middle name, Henry Baugen Leopold. And um, so I would take him to this little beach that I named Benny Beach. And my gosh, we took years. I'd take him there almost every morning when we were out in Greenport. And uh, just this Saturday, we took some of Henry's ashes and uh, sprinkled them on the ice. <laughs> it was frozen out there. But, you know, I wanted Henry to be one of his favorite places. And it was really, a, you know, it was really a, a good feeling. It yeah, felt definitely. good. You know? It's really nice. So besides all of these great memories that Henry has given you and your family, you also wrote a song about him called My Dog and I from your CD, Just the Hits. So That's let's right. take a commercial break, and when we get back, we'll play it for our listeners. Oh, fantastic. Thanks. Stay tuned. Sit and stay. Tales of the City will be right back in two shakes of a, well, tale. <laughs> 
Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Calling all pet product manufacturers and pet experts. Let the public relations and marketing professionals at Whitegate PR get you featured in the news. I'm Dana Humphrey at Whitegate PR, and we have been specializing in pet product PR for over 10 years and can get your brand featured in the media from TV to radio to print to blogs. You can find out more at www.whitegatepr.com. Hi, this is Jody Miller Young from Bark and Swagger. Tune in for everything pet fashion and more. From fashion tips and runway trends, products and designs I love, to fabulous home decor for your furry friend, you'll find it all here. Be the first to discover the new. So what are you waiting for? Find me on Pet Life Radio. And remember, when fierce fashion calls, bark and swagger. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. And we're back. You're listening to Tales of the City on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Victoria Schaefer, here with comedy writer, performer, and novelist Tom Leopold. In 2012, you released your debut CD entitled Just the Hits, which is a funny title considering it's your first album. Well, I figured, you know, if I'm paying for it, I can do whatever I want. Yeah, good good point. Um, so track six is called My Dog and I, which could not be a more fitting song for our show. So before we take a listen, can you tell us what inspired you to write this song? Well, you know, dogs are family. So I had written a song for Barbara, my wife. And one for Olivia and one for Gussie. And I couldn't leave the boy out. So I, uh, I wrote this little tune. So I hope you like it. My dog and I Go together like a jacket and tie In stormy weather You can't get us out the door We'd rather lay there on the floor Till the clouds roll by My dog and I And when I die Don't want to go to heaven What if up there on a cloud A sign says no dogs allowed That shit don't fly Never caught him, no rabbit Oh boy, ain't that fast Got a nasty habit Of snoring and passing gas How I love him A dog wouldn't do The kind of things a Bernie Madoff would do He comes when his master calls All right, so he licks his balls He's my kind of guy My dog and I No, no, not there. No, not there. Means I love you too. (laughs) 
So you told us a bunch of funny stories about Henry, but how do you think that dogs are able to get such big laughs from people, especially a big comedy writer like yourself, when they can't even talk? I know. Isn't it amazing? Like It I, really uh, is. Facebook now is just loaded with funny stuff. Every day there's funny dog stuff, you know? What's your favorite recently? I've seen a few funny ones. Oh, God. Have you seen the one where the dog is between those two guys in the car? He sings. Oh, yes, yes. And he's like howling. Yeah, that's incredible. That one is funny. I saw one. There's like a little puppy that's swimming in a bathtub, just like around in a circle <laughs> for like 15 minutes. And they just can't get him to stop. You know, if anyone has any doubt that they have feelings, how about when those soldiers come home from overseas service and they've been away for six months? I love those videos where the dog greets their owner mm, yes oh my like, gosh you know yeah those almost make me cry you know they're just so uh they have little hearts and little spirits and uh and they're hilarious and you can do things with them you know they're a great prop you know great comedy prop yeah. <laughs> so you obviously think henry was hilarious and you have such a strong connection with him but now you have these two pomeranians which you said eloise and skipper d do you think they're funny as well like do you have any funny stories about them do you find them the same connection oh gosh yeah they're hilarious we've had them for about three years now and uh well skipper d's a girl even though she's named skipper d we named them after the eloise characters you know eloise at the plaza oh yeah skipper d was the turtle i think i don't know why we like that name but <laughs> anyway uh well one thing about skipper she's so clingy i mean the word lap dog you've heard that uh, you know that word right if barbara is in the house, she has to be on top of Barbara, on Barbara's lap. And when Barbara <laughs> goes out, it's like the end of the world. Skipper sits at the front door like she's never coming back. I know it. I know it, you know. And Eloise is much cooler, you know, much more comfortable in her skin. She's, All right, this and that. I mean, she doesn't give away the affection. Like, Skipper is just an affection queen, you know. And she just licks you and wants you, you know, she's so insecure that way. But Eloise, you know, she'll give give you, she's more like a cat sort of. She'll she give it up a little bit here and there, but you got to work for it. You know, you got to work for that lick. And uh, they're so cute. Every morning, they sleep with us, of course. And uh, every morning, they lick my face to get me up to, you know, get them their grub. And that's, that's always fun, especially when it's like six in the morning. But, oh, there's one towel that Skipper likes to just <laughs> suck on. <laughs> a terrible. And, Does, and the weird thing is, Gussie used to do the same thing. And, we, and she used to make a little sound like... <laughs> And we called it nicking. It sounded like the word nick. And now Skipper does it. <laughs> so I guess it's in the genes, even though they're adopted. Does Eloise get jealous of Skipper D, like, hogging all the attention and being on Barbara's lap all the time? Couldn't care less. Mm, but Skipper good. is very jealous if, if Eloise tries to, you know. So like she's kind of an attention door, hog. Yeah. And when I come in the door, or Barbara does, they both come to the door, but Skipper's faster because she's a little bit bigger. I kiss her, I get down on my knee and always, you know, get down to their level, which is pretty low. I'm getting a little <laughs> old, so it's harder to get up. But whenever, then Eloise will catch up and come over to greet me too. And Skipper will just nudge her out of the way. So I have to like pick Eloise up. And it's all because Skipper is very needy. But then again, there you go. Like they're all, um, they all have different personalities. And without words, or it's more like sounds. When you have certain sounds, you can, you're sort of talking to them. And words, they probably, I don't know if they recognize the words, but the tone, certainly. And um, you really become telepathic with them. I certainly felt that way with Henry. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's, just, uh, it's one of those great blessings that we have on earth, I think. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And what caused you guys to go from a, a Boston Terrier to Pomeranians? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have imagine when we had three dogs for a couple of you know. Right. I was going to ask you because I sometimes have to pet sit well, another dog. And three dogs in comparison to two is so much harder in the city. Like you only have two hands to walk dogs. So you have to like balance. and. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, it was interesting because Henry wasn't, you know, was really kind of old when we got these guys, Skipper and Eloise. And he was blind. This is an interesting and deaf, you know, more and more so as he got older, but he still could fart. You know how when you lose one sense, like if you lose your sight, your hearing gets better? Well, same with Henry. His gas got even more toxic. But, <laughs> you know, he developed that sense. That was pretty much all that was left to him. But it was interesting to see these two little Pomeranians respect Henry's presence, you know? 
they uh, were respectful. They, they nipped at him and they went after him a little bit. And Henry, who was in pain a lot and blind, and you know he used to walk into walls occasionally, and we never moved the furniture so he knew where he could go. <laughs> you know, but mm. um, he was very patient with them. He was a real gent. Boston Terriers are called the first gentlemen of dogdom. Really? Yeah. What does that even mean? <laughs> well, it just means they're gents. They're aristocrats. Life. Yeah, they're like, uh, you know, they're classy. Yeah. So did your daily routine change drastically from having one dog to having three dogs? Oh, yeah. I wonder what it would have been like, you know, if Henry was, you know, his young self. It might have been a lot more trouble. But just the uh, poop, mostly, you know. <laughs> There was, a, you know, an abundance, a plethora of duty, which was, uh, you know, I thought I was through with all that with my kids, you know. <laughs> well, dogs are basically kids, as you said. That's right. Before. That's, that's another thing about getting older. You know, you still have that. Yeah, that's exactly right. They, they're kids that never grow up, and that's, and that's good. But you don't have to put them through college, which is even better. <laughs> so I went over to your house over the holidays, and you did say you had all these nicknames for Henry, but I really realized, like, Every person at the party had a different name for your dogs. How did that come about that you guys just started creating these nicknames? I don't know. You know, all those people that you were at, you know, Olivia's friends, they have known each other all their lives, you know, like they've known you. And uh, they've known Henry all their lives, too. I mean, these are kids, you know, they're, they're all big, nine foot tall boys and beautiful gals now. But Henry was uh, part of the whole scene. And so... I don't know. I don't know how that... I didn't realize that they all had different names. It's the first time I'm hearing it. I wish I knew what even, they were. Even like um, Skipper D and Eloise, they were all calling them different names. Oh, oh yeah. My dad kept thinking they were like different dogs coming out. Because yeah. he was like, no, I thought this was um, Eloise. Like, you know, it is Eloise, but we yeah. don't call her Eloise. We call her... We'll call her Mamie. Whatever. We call her Mamie, Dee Dee, and Skipper D, we call her D. Does that D confuse them? No, because it's said in the same tone. They're so used to it. Maybe. Yeah, she's right here. I wish you could see her. Eloise. <laughs> she's a black and white Pomeranian. And she likes me, which is good. And loves Barbara, too. But she kind of and Skipper D. You can't get her away from Barbara. She's what they call a blue Merle, which is I don't know how to describe it. But you've seen her. What do you think? It's like a it's like a bluish gray. Yeah, she's like grayish with black spots. Yeah. Yeah. But she's bigger, right? She's a lot bigger she's, then. Yes. And she can kind of jump on the couch, whereas we have to. We have a little step ladder for Eloise because Eloise's legs are like, that's why when we take her out to the park, you know, I got to carry her because that's uh, someone who has three inch legs or whatever they are. Ain't easy, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, there's definitely a lot of love in your home for your dogs. Oh, yeah. They sure. Is. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for sharing all your stories with me today and proving that a dog can add a ton to a family's home oh thanks victoria i think i love your show i love listening to it and it's a real treat to be part of it thanks thank you so much before we say goodbye i want to tell you about a great dog art exhibition and silent auction that is going on in san francisco but that you can view online the fantastic art includes work from famous photographers and a hundred percent of the proceeds benefits sfs pcas take your best shot and the humane society's pets for life program the Take Your Best Shot program increases the adoption rate in low-income, high-kill shelters by sending in photographers to present the dogs in uncaged portraits. This strategy lowered euthanasia rates from 70% to 30%. The Humane Society's Pets for Life program is making transformational change for dogs and cats in undeserved communities by addressing the need for affordable, accessible pet care. Go online and take a look at this terrific artwork and buy a great piece of art that will benefit these two great causes. Check out the artwork at tinyurl.com slash gooddogart and start bidding. The auction exhibition ends February 26th. That concludes today's episode of Tales of the City on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Victoria Schaefer. Join me next time when I tell you another fun and exciting tale of the city. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com.